Hey, how's it going guys? This is Papa Joe. I'm Chris. And we're here today for the first Monolith session of 2022 with our good friend Adrian Nava of the local band Father Wolf. Thank you. Thank Welcome, you for man. Having. Welcome, man. Thank you, man. So yeah, Adrian, go ahead and give us a quick intro. Uh, okay, so my name is Adrian Nava. I play uh, drums for Father Wolf. And um, I've, been, I've been playing in the scene for a while, for quite a while. So I've uh, been around, you know, for at least the past 20 years or so playing in different bands. Uh, I also play guitar as well, so one of my other bands is De Luna Means Kindness. And uh, I have other projects that I help out with, you know, a few of my friends. I play guitar for us at City Sleeps. And whoever really needs a, a musician to fill in, so you guys can always reach out to me. Hey, I want to talk to you. Right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Speaking of. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. So, so like, what got you into music? Um, music's been part of my life, like, since, since I was a kid, since I, since I was born. So, my dad, he's a singer, and uh, he plays guitar as well, so he was in bands when I was, when I was little as well. So, uh, I've, I've been around music, you know, since, since I can remember. And I picked up playing guitar since I think it was like around seven years old. I picked up, picked up playing guitar and then after that it's just, you know, just, just playing, up. you know, here and there, playing for the family, you know, like every gathering or so, they would be like, hey, take out the guitar, you know, <laughs> play for, for, you know, whoever was there. So that's how it started, basically, you know, and then over the years I got a little better, you know, uh, went to school for, you know, to learn a little bit more about guitar. And then from there, it's just playing in bands, man. What are, what's, what are some of your influences? Uh, I'm, I'm really influenced about, um, uh, in my guitar playing, uh, Santana is like probably one of my biggest ones. Uh, it, I hear him and it's like, all right, I, like, I want to play like that guy, you right, know? Right. But, you know, obviously, like everybody has his, you know, their own little flavor. But he's one of my biggest influences as far as, uh, as, far as guitar goes. Um, everybody else after that, you know, like, you know, Kirk Hammett and, you know, whoever else, like metal and whoever is like John Mayer. I'm a really big fan of John Mayer. So Heartbreak, it's heartbreak warfare. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So it's, I, know some, I know some John Mayer. Yeah, John it, Mayer, it goes, man. it goes from, you know, from the heavy stuff to the really nice, like, you know, blue stuff and anything yeah. in between. Have you seen John Mayer live? Dude, he'll put I, on a blue I, I, No, I haven't seen him and I want to go see him. Yeah, that, twice and it's yeah, good. It's good. yeah. I, I I seen the YouTube you know concerts and it's like every time I watch them it's like man like I saw them in two thousand three and in two thousand thirteen. Crazy good. That's awesome, man. Good. So man, you as a guitarist, like you were saying earlier, you listen, do you listen to a wide genre of, of music in order to like do you feel like that helps you like influence you instead of listening to one genre? Like how do you feel? Do you feel like you should? Do you feel like you should? It opens your mind up more if you listen to other genres versus one. Yeah, most definitely, man. I think yeah. I think uh, you know I I think if you if you just you know I'm a I'm a big metal fan. You know, like I I love listening to hard music, like probably for the most you know part of my of my day. You know, mm -hmm. but you know I also love like Mumford and Sons. Mm -hmm. You know, and I picked up the banjo a few times and it's like I, I want to learn it more, you know? Right, man. It's like just because it's a different technique, it's a different thing of, you know, playing and... But then I, I fall back into like, oh, well, I'm going to find like a YouTube video with somebody playing banjo in a metal band, right. you know? <laughs> and, cool see, and, see how, and see how that Marshall, sounds, yeah. you know? Right. And it's like, that's, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. And then you find like a whole bunch of like, you know, thousands of videos of like people doing that. You're like, hey, yeah, that's that's actually pretty cool, you know. So it's not necessarily like, okay, I'm just gonna listen to metal. I'm just gonna listen to to jazz or to blues or whatever. It, it's more of like, what can I do with that and this other genre too, you right. know? Mm -hmm. And what can I do with my guitar playing and apply it to like, you know, something more poppy, you know? And if I can do it, it's like, hey, that's pretty cool. That's I like got it. to learn something different, you you're know. Adding, you're adding flavor, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just more it's like of a flavor, a, it's you know. Like a recipe with the different spices. Exactly, you know. But but sometimes you get wild and you you find all those like out of like the whole norm, you know, kind of bands that are playing like banjos in a metal band, you know. Right. And it's like what? It's like yeah. like how did that happen? Or violins, or you know, whatever it is. So it's uh it, it's a cool thing to watch that you're not just like in that circle. You're thinking outside the box. Right. So I do wanna um, ask. What the hell did you guys do during the pandemic? Because I remember seeing you guys 
like pre-pandemic and you guys are great but i just saw you guys recently for the first time after the pandemic and you guys like progressed like by leaps and bounds with your sound with your stage presence like everything was like a complete package and like even judy and myself were talking about how you guys that, that night we saw you oh you guys opened for soft spoken for soft spoken yeah like, you guys were like doing bad that night yeah, you know, it's, uh, I guess everybody went through like a different, you know, however it affected everybody th th during the pandemic, you know, for us, we, I, I think at one point we kind of felt like, are we even a band <laughs> or what's going on, you know, because we, we didn't have that connection, you know, having everybody in the, in the garage, basically like jamming out, making right. noise, you know, so it was more of a, like, wh what can we do during this time? You know, to kind of like just keep it going, but you know, we can't really do anything about it. You know, we couldn't have shows, we couldn't do, uh, you know, not even like hang out. You know, practice. so yeah, not even practice. So it, it was, it was, uh, it was a little weird, but somehow we kind of like pulled through. We started actually at the very beginning of the pandemic. AJ and I, we started uh, tracking the EP, and we started doing that like for a couple of months, I believe. So we did, you know, guitars, we did drums, we did bass. And we were just basically waiting for Willie, our, our singer, to just come and start doing vocals. So that kept me kind of busy during the pandemic because I like we recorded everything in my garage. So I started just mixing and you know EQing and doing all that stuff. So it kept me busy, but I guess it kind of like gave me a chance to give the rest of the guys hope that hey, we're still doing this. You know, mm -hmm. we're not gonna just quit because you know we're just stuck at home. Right. You know. So. I think like we just listened to that EP like for s so much that it kind of like just got in our heads and like by the time we started playing, when the when the beginning of the year like we felt like we hadn't like really skipped a beat. Right. You know, it was more like all oh, cool. Like we've been listening to these songs like over and over and over, and you know we tried vocals whatever, and it, it we got together and it felt like we we just missed like two practices. Yeah, I'm excited you for you guys. I'm excited for other people to see you guys out there. You know, I know you, can, you. you were talking about a tour. Yes, yes, we're uh, we're working with our with our boy Danny River. He's been uh, he's been really good help, helping us out, like trying to book some shows out of town, and hopefully we get something uh, put together in May. Um, if not, like some sometime in the summer, that it, it would be really cool to do. So hopefully we get a like maybe about five six shows in texas you know oh, yeah. i know somebody who has connections in texas oh awesome man we need those <laughs> <laughs> for sure man yeah. oh man chris uh, is a aficionado of booking tours there you yeah. go man yeah. 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 for his own band so <laughs> <laughs> that works you know, dude, I, I would do it for i do it for other bands man but you know there's there's, there's bookers and promoters out there that that will charge you to do it and yeah, I'm just not with those guys, dude. I'll, I'll give you a hook up and say, hey, man, it's on you to, to, to follow through with it. Yeah. But, you know, I never charge a, a special El Paso band that wants to get out of here and go tour. I never charge them to, like, like help them out, man. I think, yeah. that's, I, think that's, I think that's fucking ugly. You know what I mean? It's yeah, very, yeah, for sure. Selfish, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, it, you know, if you have the connection, you know, just lend a hand. You know? right, man. It's, it's always cool. And it's, it's appreciated a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it means... Sometimes it means like the world to that bad, you know, right. to get yeah. a show. There. It's okay to be human people. Exactly. Right, man? It's, okay. Yes. it's okay to be okay. Right? <laughs> Fucking be yeah. nice to people. Right. Sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's, the, that's the name of the game, but unfortunately not for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, people will take advantage of that. They will take advantage of your goodwill and hospitality, man. So uh, be careful out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got to make sure, that, and like we were talking earlier, you got to make sure that the places you're booking, the promoters and the venues, you know they're expecting you to come through for them, but at the same time you are too, man. You just need a date, you know, uh, a place to play. So I know it's it. Sometimes it can be really cutthroat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You just hope for the best. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think I think even locally, you know, like you you play a show and and I think the menu expects for you to like, but you know, the best show that you can. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's all about that commitment and like honoring your word. I know it's hard, man. But that, I don't know. I don't even know. Is that something that you would use in this context? Because shit happens, and sometimes people have to yeah. drop, or shit gets canceled. Yeah, that's true. I know it's hard. I know it's. Hard. I'm, I can't imagine how frustrating it is for touring bands who are like stuck in the middle of nowhere, far from home, and just the the letdown of 
a show being dropped last minute. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, but we hope that you guys have good luck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks. You guys will, man. Yeah, get rid of all that bad juju. <laughs> get out of the right. All right, let's, uh, yeah, uh, that's out of the way, man. Yeah. yeah, hopefully, yeah, we, we we're uh, we're playing a show coming up this Saturday, so uh, hopefully we get a, a good turnout on that. There's there's a ton of bands in that in that bill, so. I'm sure it just the bands themselves. It's gonna be a good chunk of people there. So yeah, at where, least that, you know. Where can people find your music and stuff like that? Uh, we have it up on Spotify, um, you know, Apple Music, you know, okay. Amazon, and all that stuff. Father Wolf, uh, our EP is called Chapter One. Okay. So you guys can find it there. It's a it's a uh, five song EP. So you you'll get a taste of what what we sound like. Okay. You know, it's. It's actually kind of hard to like pinpoint like oh we sound like this band or like you know we're this style whatever because we have a lot of like stuff going on sometimes that it, it, it's just like not a one kind of genre right. thing you know what well, I mean? I mean that gets boring too. If every song sounds the same. I mean yeah exactly. It's just fucking boring. I, I heard a heavy every time I die influence. Like yes we show. are we are influenced by them like it's, especially probably me like I'm like. You know, one of those like fan girls that you know, <laughs> you know, I see something, Same. yeah, it's, it's like so new album, shame. and I'm like, yeah, I'm buying it. You know, so it's shame like, in my fan yeah, exactly. No, no, not at all. But but you know what? It's it's weird though because you know, and I'm the same thing with like Santana. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's one of the, the the things that you know you look up to those artists and you wanna like be like them and yeah. you wanna be in their shoes. So it's it's more of a you know a, a, like a hero kind of thing. You know right. that that. Uh, I get that. That I see it as, you know. But other people see it as like, ah, dude, you're just like too much into this band or whatever, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, yeah, just shut up, you know. Influence. Yeah, exactly. You know, but but the thing is that, like, we, even though we're influenced by, like, all these artists and, and you know, everybody in the band is influenced by, like, the different bands and different artists, like, we all collectively, like, bring all that in, you know. And it doesn't sound like this band or this other band. It sounds like everybody's influence is in there right you know so we have like punk we have like you know like slow stuff we have like heavy stuff we have breakdowns we have like all these kind of things that that makes us kind of like oh yeah we want to sound like our heroes but mm -hmm. you know it's like we're creating our own kind of s style in our own kind of sound okay yeah? so cool. yeah that, that that's basically what it is it is as far as uh as far as the sound you know like we we try to like like be like oh yeah we sound like these guys or even other people that tell us like, hey, you guys sound like these dudes, but you also guys sound like these guys, yeah. you know. So it, it, it's even hard for other people to like really let us know like, oh yeah, you guys sound like this, or you guys are in this style of you know music or whatever. At least they don't say you don't sound like a little biscuit or something like that. Yeah, I I like it. Yeah, I like little biscuit, like but you know, I like a biscuit too. But yeah, yeah I mean those dad vibes. Like yeah, yeah, I know. Time or two, where you do it for the nookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. um I was gonna ask about music videos. Do you have any music videos for the new EP? Uh, we we did uh, we did do a lyric video for our single when we released it uh, for the song Lazaretto. So uh, we we worked something out pretty quick and and we ended up uh, putting it together when we released it. Can help you with that. Yeah, it's uh it's it's been challenging too, man, because of the pandemic, you know, as well. So it's well, like Julian, I could help you with yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's. It, 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 during that time, during the pandemic, that's when we were like, well, we can't really make a video, so, you know, let's just do a lyric video, you know? Yeah, but yeah, have exactly. A, now we have a little production company for music videos called New J Media, so for anybody out there, we're, we're pretty reasonable. Nice. Well, not me, but yeah, we're trying, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to help out one band, uh, oh, as many bands as we can, you know, while we can. Yeah, uh, that's definitely, so. man. Uh, uh, okay, so you mentioned the name of the EP, so talk to us a little bit about it. Um, the EP has been um, it's been a lot of like emotions and in, in each imagine, song, yeah in each of the songs uh, our singer he's uh, he writes a lot about his uh, his view of, of his life you know ups and downs and it's uh, it's one of those uh, it's one of those like you know lyrics in each song that it's like intense as far as a like a downer. But then it's like intense, also as like, yeah. But I'm getting out of this, you know. I'm I'm looking out, you know, at the positive things about it and trying to like, you know, I went through a bad time, but I'm going to good times, right. you know. Right. So it's uh, it's it's a lot of it is based on that, you know, uh, about hard times and then getting out and like, you know, conquer those bad times that you had, 
you know, basically. And our, our single uh, Lacerator, it's, we actually wrote it about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So if you hear the lyrics, like you're, you'll like connect those two, you know, the lyrics to the, to the whole pandemic that we went through. So it, it fits the style and it fit like what we wanted to say, basically. You know, we're all stuck at home and the song just came out out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, AJ and I, we got together and we wrote it like in a day or so. Damn, and it just awesome. came out and it's just like yeah. cool and then we we told our, our singer Willie is like hey we have the song now and he's like boom there you go knock it out yeah knock it out and it came out and, and we we dug it and we we liked it and we made it part of the EP so yeah it's crazy because we hadn't gotten together to do one of these sessions because of the pandemic um, I don't know there was a good while where it was kind of like that's scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, no, nobody really knew what was going on as far as, like, when we were going to be able to, like, have this happening, yeah. you know? Yeah. The last, so. As a matter of fact, the last session we did, we did it with um, David. David. Oh, yeah, the casualty. Yeah, that was, yeah. Man, that was, was a while back. That was the last one. Damn, when was that? And I think that was during a time when the, the numbers were kind of down. And then all of a sudden, the shit hit the fan again. So we just, like, you know what? We better just chill. Right. Man, that was last year or something, right? Yeah, it was last oh, year. Oh, wow, man. Some, like October, I think, or I don't, I don't remember, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> so we were like wondering if we're ever going to be able to get back to this. So, you know, luckily we are and we're we're here today. And nice. luckily some of us made it. I, I, I got COVID in January, man. And I could tell you from my experience, when you first test positive, you're like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> like it's real. And then you don't even know what to expect. Like, mm. like I, I went straight home to quarantine, and I was I was able to stay away from my family enough where nobody else got in my house. But uh, the worst part for me was I was asymptomatic. The worst part for me was just like being bored in a room by myself, and then like the yeah. little sensation I felt I was like, oh shit, this is it. Uh, <laughs> and then it was just like man. gas or something. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. But I'm I'm really fortunate, man. You know, I, I thank God that I'm still here, man. Because a lot of people that I know. Weren't, weren't that lucky. Yeah. Right, you're writing your will in your bed. Yeah, I know. It's like, all right, <laughs> I'm watching the end Netflix. of my life, right? I never caught COVID, man, but I, I caught the clap once. I said, I beat that, Ooh. so I'm still here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's many people who have not beat it. Yeah, that's right. true, man. I yeah, don't, I don't even want to know about that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, lucky enough, I, I haven't caught it yet, too, so. It's uh, with the clap or COVID. <laughs> well, either one. But. Right. It's a new version of both. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. The clap it. Damn. The clap it. Yes. It's a new one, man. <laughs> no, so, anyways, I mean, I'm glad that you guys are here. I'm glad you didn't get it. You didn't get sick, cause man, it's kind of like touch and go. You don't know what which way it's gonna go. Yeah. Cool. So we're back, but this time we got AJ. From Father Wolf. <laughs> He's man. a guitarist, man, and uh, we wanted to kind of get a different perspective of Father Wolf from the from the the axe man. So go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit, and then we'll ask you some questions regarding like the guitar work and stuff for your EP. All right, cool, man. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Thanks for um, oh, for sure, man. Thank you. Hospitality is great, and um, well, I'm Angel Perez, but they call me AJ. I'm the uh, guitarist of Father Wolf. Uh, Pretty much just been in the uh, music biz since, man, I want to say maybe about 12 years old. Uh, at first it wasn't quite uh, something I saw that I was going to be doing to, to up to this point. Uh, I saw it more as a way to get away from things. You know, coming from like a military family, a lot of traveling, so, you know, I couldn't just uh, make friends like that easy, quick, and, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go outside. You know, play frisbee or something. So I had to kind of get away and just, uh, you know, focus on the music. So it got me through a lot. Um, you know, and yeah, I never thought I would, you know, make it this far. You know, but uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, you know, and I didn't really want to do guitar at first. I actually wanted to do uh, a piano and uh, like trumpet. You know, I kind of want to do the jazzy stuff. Were you like a band kid in school? Yeah. Uh, you know what, man? No one plays the flute. Either. I like I never seen anybody go down a road and you know like jazz fruit <laughs> Ron Burgundy jazz like, fruit what's, what's yeah. wrong with the out of nowhere take a flute yeah. Yeah, I'm not prepared <laughs> yeah. I mean, but man just sit in the bar somebody breaks out a fucking flute dude and yeah. it's like oh man come really on cool. Cool. somebody out there do that shit that'd be a treat that'd there be you great go. yeah, I know what you mean I my, my son's an orchestra kid so 
uh, I think that like music for the youth is like really important, especially like you just mentioned that you did it to keep uh, away from other stuff or to keep your mind busy with that. Yeah, a lot, mean, of, a lot of stresses. Think, uh, yeah, I think it's it's really good for that. It's a good outlet. Yeah, a good, so, um, a good a good positive outlet. Yeah, yeah, because I was I was homesick a lot. Uh, you know, all the traveling. You know, as I mentioned, you know, family was in the military, so I would go from state to state, country to country, city to city, etc. Being there no more than year, year and a half. Boom, gotta pack up. Let's go again. Yep. Year, year and a half, tops three years. Boom, pack up. Let's go. We gotta go. It's like damn. damn so it, and it it sucked to the point where you know not only being homesick, but I you know I would finally start making like close friends and mm. you know like oh what's up man like I like get close and then out of nowhere oh father's got orders we gotta take off. So it it was always a lot of like you know heartbreak and, and, and like a lot of episodes and stuff yeah. So the, yep. So the music kind of was like. A way to get me to keep my mind off of that. That was like the one you had like something consistent in your life, right? The music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you from originally? Uh, well, I was born here uh, in El Paso, Texas. Uh, I wasn't quite raised uh, here, so you know I was born here, and then I think about a year, year and a half. Uh, my sister uh, was then born, but we were overseas in Germany. Wow. So she she actually was born there, and then uh, from there we went back to the states. I want to say uh, it was California. Then we went to Colorado, and with Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, back to Germany, and then to Georgia again, and then here. Oh, well, Spurs, Spurs, Du hast. Everybody's all tripping out. God damn. Yeah, I know. Oh, shit. German. That's out of the room. Only. Yeah. Well, only, the, only, the, uh, only enough to uh, order from McDonald's overseas. Yeah. That was it. No quarter pound of the rack. No, Royal. Yeah, no quarter pound of the rack. You should feel combo one. Just give me the double cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's, we're living over there, man. Uh, they eat mayonnaise with their, their, their fries and ass. Uh, it's a lot of bread. A lot of bread, a lot of pork. A lot of, yep. A lot of pork, bread, and beer. Beer. Warm beer. Yeah, and it's sauerkraut. Okay. Mm -hmm. And rye nice. bread. It just, yeah. Sounds nasty, but it's not that bad. They did it right here, however. I don't trust German food here in the States. <laughs> it's not right. I, had, I mean, I've had brawl words and stuff like that, but... Yeah, it's I made right. You know, yeah. you know what I miss about Germany? Uh, donor kebabs. You ever had one of those over there? Um, the one that sells the meat's on the big wheel, they cut it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a Brazilian yeah. style. Yeah, they put it in like a, a, not a pita bread, but a, it's like a stale type of the, bread. Uh, gyro. Yeah, it's not a gyro. It's not a gyro, or gyro, whatever the hell you say it. It's not <laughs> one of those. It's made like it, but it's, the bread uh, is different. Uh, or like, like a yeah, You know, all ethnic foods yeah. have a sandwich, but they just call it their own. They, they call it their own their own name. Like, I remember uh, I went, I was in New York about four years ago, and we went to, I went to this food court that was like underground in the subway. Mm -hmm. And oh, sure. uh, it was a Bolivian restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it was like a torta, but they call it chola. Mm -hmm. So I called Judy and I was like, hey, you're not going to believe it, but I'm a about to eat a chola. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hey, enjoy. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> no, What's her name, eh? <laughs> was it yeah, like a, they call it chola. It wasn't like an Arby sandwich. It, it was like a three different kinds of three pork in three different ways in a sandwich. So not like an Arby sandwich? Really? No. no Instead of four cheeses, it was four meats. Three, three no. pork. So okay, so <laughs> talk to us about like your your process when you were writing guitars for the for Father Wolf, for the CP. Uh, I pretty much took uh, previous experiences from other bands and tried to incorporate into a new style. Before this band, I kind of did more of the uh, like southern kind of more of a blues and uh, just rock and roll kind of stuff. But you know, I wanted to stay also within the area that I was more familiar with. You know, the heavy stuff, you know, metalcore and punk and all that. And in the same process, taking, you know, in consideration and influences of bands I used to listen to. So I wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, but not stray away too much from what I was familiar with or good at. You know, because if, if you're good at something, you know, you know, keep at it, you know. The only way to go is up. Right, right. So um, when we were making the songs, uh, I would try to take uh, you know, like ways of uh, redoing or re if this makes sense, like kind of like uh, taking songs that I used to write or that I wrote before and kind of like just twisting it. Right. Kind of taking one genre that I knew how to play and make it a an another way. And in the process, it allowed me to 
be a little bit more creative and also it uh, ended up making songs I never thought I would know how to make you know so because I, I to be honest I thought I was just gonna only know how to play one way right because Still to this day, I'm still trying to do like the sweeps, you know, and, like the soloing and the stuff, you know, that arpeggios, arpeggios, you know, I, I can't do that, I fucking suck, you know, so I, you know, I just took what I knew and what I was familiar with, and I was like, okay, and I took into consideration as well with the other members, you know, like uh, what they were influenced, what they would want to hear, and just try to kind of work with them, and you know, and just figure out how to come up with a sound that we could all, you know, be familiar with, but also not to where people are going to think, you know, oh, we're just copying from other bands, you know, and just try to keep it sounding different and not too repetitive, you right. know, and similar to other bands. Because, uh, you know, if all the songs sound the same, you're not doing it right. Right. So, you know, it's, it's got to it's gotta be diverse. you, you got to kind of show the listeners that you, you, you're trying to make the, the music listenable. You know, you, you don't want it to be yeah, sounding like attention. one long song. You know, because you're going to lose listeners that way. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, of course, there are going to be some people out there that are going to be like, oh, you sound like that band or whatever. And it's like, well, I mean, yeah, you know, the influence has to come from somewhere. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's know? a compliment too, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, even the great bands, you know, like, you, know, you got those, like Metallica and all that, you know, or even up to like Slipknot, you know, they all have influences. They all have bands that they used to listen to as kids back in the day. And what they have, the sound they generated, you know, what they use in their music, is all influenced from what they used to listen to. You know, you can't just uh, come up with something completely, you know, new and not say you haven't heard something like that or similar somewhere else. Right. right. You know, it's, 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 there's always going to be a familiar sound. But it's, it's not so much what you play, it's how you play it. So, you know, you got to grab the attention of listeners, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the times, too, you know, listeners will be like, okay, well, that sounds weird. It's unfamiliar, so people will kind of not give it a shot, not, not give it a chance. Right. You know, it's too weird for me. It's not my cup of tea. You know, it, it's their way of saying like, uh, like don't sound like other bands, but at the same time sound familiar. Yeah. You know, just so we can, you know, get what type of music you're trying to get at, and not just trying to do something completely random and weird. Right. You know, and then it, it just kind of, you know, they want they wouldn't understand. So it's just something you got to kind of keep familiar, but not copyright or you know do exactly what other bands do because then it starts to get a little bumpy you know it opens <laughs> up a can of worms right and all the hate starts spreading and right. you know people are going to start saying no nah, don't go don't listen to this band you know they just copy other bands and all that and you know we try to stray from that right so you know and of course you know some people are always going to say oh you sound like a certain band but you know we you know like you're saying we can take it as like a compliment yeah i mean like when i told you guys you sound like every time i die i'm I meant that in the best way possible. Oh man, you know, does, does that sometimes get on get on your nerves when somebody says, "Not not not, not take it that way." I know you, I know you mean by it. Yeah. But does sometimes that does that get on your nerves when somebody says, "Oh man, you sound like this band. You sound like this band. You sound like this band." You're like, "Yeah, we may sound like this, the, the, we may be having influences in that in that band, but we're not trying to sound like that band." You know what I mean? We're we're, we're different. We're trying to sound like us. Yeah, um, there quite a bit, uh, but it doesn't really quite annoy me. Uh, usually, my follow-up question to that is, "Well, did we do it right?" Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Good point. So you know, it's like, yeah, you can say we sound like this band, but do do we suck at it? Yeah. You know. And then it kind of gets them like, oh, well, no, that's pretty good. And like, well, yeah, you know, as long as we're doing it right, you mm -hmm. know. And and I'll explain to them as well, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of these great bands, musicians, singers, you know, they they get their influence from somewhere. Right. Right. Where's influence? You know. Right. You, so. I don't really get uh, annoyed about it. I kind of see it more as like, uh, uh, like them telling us we're doing it right. Because like a compliment. We, yeah, like a compliment. Because yeah. okay. if if they say we sound like a certain band, that means you know we are within that area of sound as far as you know being a band. And and, and for them to to have them you know like realize how we sound like another band, it, it's yeah, it's the biggest compliment. What about if they said? Because I've gotten this before. We sound nothing like any of these bands. Like, hey man, you sound great. Do you sound like Greta Van Zandt? I don't even know who that is. <laughs> oh, really? Greta Van Fleet. Oh, where the fuck are they? From? <laughs> the one that sounds like Led, uh, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Uh, oh, now they sound kind of like Rush. Do they? Oh my gosh. All right. I would have a lot of questions. I'd be like, well, well what parts made made, yeah. us, made yeah. you think that? You know? And uh, I would take it as notes. You know, like, oh, okay. Well, hey, maybe. We can try and incorporate that that style and that sound into our new music. Thanks for the 
You know, you know what, Greg Affy is actually a good fan, but I think the problem is that, it's not their problem, the problem is, is that they just got overplayed with their first album. Mm. I think they just got burned out, man, on radio. I don't know, I thought they're a, a Led Zeppelin tribute band, man. I yeah, really do, yeah, of course. You, can, you can't do. deny the, the sound. No, that is the sound. Yeah, you can't deny it. Straight ripped off, man. But like we keep yeah. saying, it was an infl it's an influence. Must have been the only influence. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't diversify. Then I gotta give him a listen now. So like, what, you, what would you tell like a young musician who's like already starting off in local bands about like what's some uh, advice you would share with them? Because I know that there's a lot to learn, especially with uh, since you were 12, playing since you were 12. What would you like? How would you help somebody who's just starting off? I tell them never give up, regardless of what people tell them. If you want to play a certain genre that you feel you can master and can see yourself progressing and getting somewhere with it, keep at it, you know, and take all the backlash, all the, you know, criticism and everything as, like, uh, motivation, you know, right. like, uh, give uh, yourself a reason to prove people wrong, and in the process, and especially if you progress and, you know, you feel like you, you are, which you will, you know, people are going like, to notice it, Right. you know, they're going to be like, you know, like, man, they sucked, you know, but then they hear you weeks, months, years later, and, you know, next thing you know, usually the same people that tell you suck are the ones all on their knees telling you, oh, you're great, and I follow you guys and all that, all because they kept at it, you know, because if you switch your genre, you switch your type of music just because of, like, one person or a group of people say, it, it's not going to fit, so you're, you're going to be, you're going to be like a false idol, you're going to play music that wasn't meant for you. Right. I like that, man. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Just keep at it, you know, like regardless of people say, if you want to play something weird, play, play it weird, but do it right. And keep keep at it, you know, show people that, you know, you can play anything. Because the music industry is all about creativity, you know, and not so much on how well you can play an instrument. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you can do it right for a specific type of music, you know, people are going to listen to it. You know, right. they're going to give you that chance. You know, it's and it's a, and it's a hard industry, it's difficult. You know, it's not it's not an easy road to take. You know, there's gonna it's gonna have to take a lot of work. Most above all, a lot of patience and practice. You know, you can't just learn something overnight. You know, it's it's, it's something you gotta keep at it and be devoted to it. You know, just like how uh, when bands start off, you know, and they get their new members and like, hey, are you flexible? Can you show up to practice? And that's another thing I would tell someone like if they're starting off, like know your members. If you see any little red flags, anything where, you know, they start canceling on you a lot, they don't show up, or you don't see them really progressing like the rest of the members are, right then and there, get a, get a, get a step ahead and start making some changes. You know, because also in this industry, you got to make sacrifices. You know, I've been in other bands where, you know, we had to let go of some people, you know, because, not because they didn't know how to play or anything like that, but they, they didn't show the devotion. You know, we're just want a good fit. Yeah, because the whole band has to be on the same page, same mentality. Because if right. one's off, one doesn't want to show the devotion, it's gonna affect the whole band. Right. You know, and even the sound, you can hear it. Like if, if you're not feeling it, if, yeah. if it's just not there, because the audience can tell when you're not practicing. Like you may think, oh yeah, we got the songs down, we have them memorized. There's a difference between having it memorized and actually playing it well. So and, and the listeners will notice that. Right. Get, it can't be one person carrying the whole band. Yeah. You and, know what I mean? And they they can tell too. Like you know, they're like man, this guy's a good singer, but mm -hmm. for some reason the guitar wasn't on it today. He like last time. Yeah, yeah, true. Or he doesn't come to practice. Mm -hmm. Or he's not even writing lyrics. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. Or or like you see like some bands that almost every show there's different members, so you, yeah. you start to think like. Yeah. Is it like a, a one artist with just you know his own group of people that he switches off, or are they going through some issues, whatever you know, like no one they can't keep a band together, so you know they're gonna start to doubt the band, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah they sound good, but I mean it looks like they'll probably break up, you know, like I'm not gonna spend money on merch or all this whatever, they're probably just gonna break up. You have to give them that that uh, reason, that uh, confirmation right. that you guys are gonna be around and that you're devoted to it, you're gonna make it right, and that right there will influence. Other people, especially the youth, are um, like, oh, well, I want to be in a band, you know, and mm -hmm. they're going to see how it's being done, how, how it's like something you got to take serious, mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of new artists will come about, because if not, I mean, people are going to do it just for show. They're going right. to use 
the whole being in a band to just showboat get popularity. Right. And and once you have that mentality, you're not gonna make it. Right. You know, you gotta be willing to do it to to satisfy the listeners. You know, like we want to do it because, you know, not to sell albums, not to get all famous or anything. We do it because we want to show people that this is something you can do and it's fun. You know, and and do it for the right reasons. You know, don't do it for all that because then. Oh, it's a passion. You know, yeah, you gotta. And you gotta prove it to them, you know. Hey, this is our passion. We're not here to just make money. And a lot of people, especially nowadays, they're all salty about it, and they're not gonna give you the time yeah. of day. And you're like, oh, they're a bunch of a holes, you know. They just want it for this and that. They just want it for, for girls and stuff. And you know, we're not about that. So, so, okay. As a guitarist, how would you describe yourself? Like, like, are you a gear guy who likes to buy pedal boards and all that, or are you a drop tune guy? Like, what about your guitar playing? Describe you. Um, I rarely, I actually haven't used any pedals since I got in this band. Um, our drummer uh, Adrian uh, actually is kind of showing me how to like work with them and everything. I'm, I'm more of a just plug and play, mm. oh, just raw, just straight in. You know, I, oh, I mm. accept the feedback. You know, I'm not yeah, like yeah. a lot of people that are like, oh, turn the feedback down or it's too up. No, man, loud, make it noisy, you know, raw and everything. I would but, never guess that, man. Yeah. So I just, you know, because I, I feel like. Without using pedals and everything, it, it kind of gives my sound a more natural, yeah, know. you know, sound. It's just what's coming out of your guitar yeah. and, your, and your. But I mean, I do consider, yeah. you know, the pedals, you know, because uh, you wanna you wanna make sure the music sounds cool and, and different, yeah. you know, not just the plug and play, because not everyone's gonna favor that. Right. You know? And luckily, my drummer, you know, he shows me, he's been showing me how to use them and everything, and it's pretty cool, you know. Um, you know, we have a lot of, uh, we figured out a way to kind of loop in the guitar and bass, mm -hmm. you know, and because uh, I like to have like plan B's, like contingencies, you know, like because especially like when the guitars are going to go out and then the way I play, strings can pop, you know, the amps go out, so, you know, he shows me how to work out the pedals and everything so that we, stuff like that doesn't happen. And, uh, and, I, and you know, at first I didn't, I didn't really uh, like did that kind of or this kind of music you know I kind of wanted to do like a, just more acoustic type of stuff and even oh, at wow. and even at then I, I mean I didn't know anything about how the amps worked or or any pedals like that so as I went on I started getting more savvy with it but even to this day I, I mean I just just plug and play just straight all natural just raw sound you ever thought about adding another guitarist or you, you got this um actually we are uh, we went through some some people. Uh, right now we have someone that... I, I can tell you, you guys sound full, like a full band. But I'm asking that because you probably don't need one. But if it's going to complement your playing, then by all means, you know. Oh, no. Um, the way I see it is uh, having a second guitarist would probably make make it sound even better. Uh -huh. You know, and more fuller. And, uh, you, know, kind of, you know, the way I play and then having someone to try and incorporate it. You know their 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 style of, of guitar. I mean, I mean the possibilities can be endless. Like who knows? Maybe we can even come up with a sound completely different, and maybe even be better than what we play. And then you know, and so I I don't want to exclude any possibilities. If someone comes up and says, "Hey, can I try it?" I will not, you know, deny them. I'm like, "Yeah, man, let's, let's try it." We don't know. Hey. You know that Adrian's back there, think wondering if he can play guitar and drums right now. <laughs> At the same That'd be time, crazy. <laughs> or guitar, sing, and keyboards all at once. Yeah. <laughs> but that'd be cool. I mean, and then uh, also recently, because uh, I never really did vocals, so we also are trying to do like backups with it. Because um, what we usually do too is like when we have shows and like people give us videos, we like to, you know, like those coaches in football, right. we like I to review, review the plays or the film to hear, see where we're mis our mistakes are at how we can progress, where we need to improve. And uh, Adrian and our singer were suggesting, let's have backup vocals. You know, and then I was like, oh man, I can't sing, I can't scream, I can't do anything. But I still wanted to try and give it you know, a shot. Never and uh, we had a show recently at, at, at your place, mm -hmm. The Raves. And uh, I think that was like maybe the second show where I tried vocals and it's, it's just coming natural and it sounds more full. Because before then it, it was just, you know, our singer just doing the vocals. Uh, so our bassist too is a, Trying to take that up as well, and just trying to, just trying to work with the band, and I think doing that 
you know, it can open up more possibilities on as far as sound and how much more full we can do, you know. And that's why we are considering another guitarist as well, just so that way it sounds just a lot more fuller. Because I think we can sound better. Okay, so it's time for the monolith session history lesson. Kind of right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, I want to talk to you about like the like back in the day in the El Paso music scene because like they played a show at Raves recently. I want to give a shout out real quick to Cindy at Raves Club because she's been really cool with us. Uh, she asked, she invited Judy and I to start booking some shows there just to help her out. So we started a new production company called Mop and Pop Booking. So if you guys are watching and you're in a band, hit us up, shameless plug. And um, so Adrian and I were talking after after the show, and I I never realized how like how long he's been in the scene and all the bands he's he's uh, seen and played in and, and uh, like all the venues he's been to. Like he brought up a bunch of like OG venues. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's funny, but I've been I've been around the scene a while. <laughs> yeah. You know, and sometimes I I think I kind of stay behind the scenes, but but yeah, I, I've gotten a chance to play quite a lot and seen a lot of venues that are no longer around. And a lot of bands too that that you know stopped along the way, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's been it's been quite a, a cool trip, man. Since I started playing, you know, since I started like hitting up the the venues and playing around and, and this and that, you know. But but yeah, we we were talking about you know the old school stuff, and it's it's I guess it was kind of like a little strange because we haven't really like talked about no, we you know really like sit on talk too much. I would see you at shows. I remember seeing you with uh, Te Duda. Yeah, and but we just never really had the chance to like chill and talk yeah yeah just like chit chat you know like just like you know like share a conversation you know yeah. whatnot. and they were it was kind of like oh yeah like you remember that you remember that and it's yeah. like yeah i was there too dude we have so many good memories <laughs> so what, you, what is the difference between now that you see between the, the i guess the scene back in the day versus now <laughs> well like i i'm pretty sure you're you relate to this you know like back in the day it was there was no internet you know, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't yeah, Instagram, why? there wasn't anything like that. Yeah. You know, you literally had to go out and tell people, hey, we have a show. Yeah, dude, get a Like, look, come over. You had to look at porn, like, on paper. Like, <laughs> you know, you can't look at Man, you, you, you remember those, those, uh, way back. Right? I know it's like those old school, like, papers from Quadis that had, like, the, the, the girl in the back of yeah. the, the section, you know? It was, it, yeah, it was like that. It was like the... Uh -huh. The old school caveman kind of deal, you know, to deal, you know, where you really had to go and like push the show by, yeah. like, what flyers, or flyers, you know, talking to people, you well, know. It's funny that you mention that because I was talking to this kid the other day. This kid's about eighteen, I think, and he's he's in a local band. And I saw some footage of their recent show, like his band did a show at some warehouse, and it was packed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude. How did you do that? Like, how did you get all those kids to come to your show? Because it's hard to get, it's hard to get people to come sh to shows, man. That's just, that's just the fact. And he's like, you know what? He said, you know what, sir? We printed a bunch of flyers, we cut them all up, and we passed them out at school. And that's how we get our friends to come to our shows. Right. So, like, even the the younger kids now are are learning like from the OG method. Maybe we need to go back to that, man. Yeah, I think so, man. I think it means a lot when you hand somebody, you know, a flyer and, and talk to them about it. Yeah, Definitely, cool. man. I think that was I think that was the approach back then. You know, like we had a, it was more personal. It you was, know, it was yeah. it, and it was something that, you know, the, whoever you were reaching out to, you know, they got a chance to like meet you, talk to you, and if it was something that they were into as well, they're like, yeah, I'll be there. And for the most part, you know, like eight times out of ten. Those people that you spoke to and you gave a flyer to, you saw them there at the show. Yeah. Right. You know, it was yeah. it was it was a totally different like you know way of doing things. Right. You know, and then you know we get we get the Facebook we get well we get MySpace. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like a totally different story. You know, right. it's like people are talking to each other like you know uh, people from other states, from other cities, from other places. You know, from like venues, like trying to book shows here and there, and it's just like. I think along the way, some people got lazy, you know, right. and got in, into that comfort zone where it's like, oh, I'm just going to promote on, on Facebook. Yeah. You know? Facebook fucking destroyed the world. Man. <laughs> it, just, it destroyed the whole world. But, but the thing is that, like, it's, it's a tool, 
if you know how to use it right, it could it could be beneficial. You know, it, it's something that you could really take advantage of. You know, I'm not, I don't know, man. I think a lot of people are venturing away from Facebook because it, it's become like toxic. You know, yeah, I, mean? I think it's too monotone now. You know, it's yeah. just like it's the same thing over and over and over and over. Yeah, you know? yeah. Hey, we get it. You don't like Trump and you don't like Biden. We get it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all both of their fault. Right, yeah, it's all politics, man. That's what it is. I blame Jesus, okay? <laughs> but no, I think I think it's like it has, you know, from from coming from a scene that was very manual, you know, work of like you know promoting your your show or or even promoting like other bands' shows, you know, because we did you know that a lot of times too, man. Like we had like our buddies from other bands that we would tell our friends is like, hey, go to that show too. Right. You know, if you like us, you're probably gonna like these dudes right. too. Yeah. Now, how do you, you feel? Know? Do you feel people are doing that today, or do you feel like it's gotten selfish? And you know, it's funny because of what you mentioned right now about that kid that you know pulled in a whole bunch of people to that show. I think now, like kids are kind of realizing it's like, oh, the the OG way is a better way. Yeah, or, you know what I mean. Yeah. Maybe they they just I don't even know if they know that's an OG way. I think they're just rationalizing it in a different way. And they probably think, you know what? If we talk to them, maybe they'll come. Yeah, that's true. That's, uh, yeah, because it's, be, it's you know, I, I think, think it's the best way to talk to them about how you know, things were done in the past. Yeah, go back, like we're saying, go back and just go to fucking bars and take flyers to the bar and say, hey, can I put it at the bar? And I'm pretty sure people are going to go to bars and see the flyer. See, but, take but that's people. another thing, though, too, is like, I, like, I've been saying for a long time that I remember when I first started going to shows, there were a lot of kids there because it was an actual venue, it wasn't a bar. A lot of these shows were at, at a church. The, like the pastor would remember at Open Gate Church. Open Gate, yes, we we got a chance to open, you know, uh, for a lot of really good bands. I that, know, that dude. We saw there. the chariot there at Open Gate Church. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. So, so but back bands. then it was all ages and kids were allowed, and the shows were done by ten, and it was awesome. But right. now everybody wants to have, you know, everybody's booking shows at bars, and it makes it kind of hard for the kids to show up. And like, are their parents cool with them being in a bar surrounded by adults? Yeah, I think I think that's where we're we're lacking off, you know, like all age shows, or at least like a spot where where kids can go to, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I went to a show recently on an Alameda and like, yeah, there's a a new venue called the Music Gallery, and there's this guy named Adrian running that place, and it's actually pretty cool. Uh, he charges the kids five bucks, and they still show up like in groups. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's it's a it's a small sized venue, but it was packed, and I guess it's because it's. The youth, you know, that's why they're showing up because they get a chance to come and hang out with their friends and stuff. And I saw a bunch of parents like dropping the kids off and just driving on. <laughs> yeah, the way it used to be. Yeah, the way it used to be. Yeah, because that was that was the only way to to get around. You know, you had to ask your parents for a ride. You know, or if your friend had a car, you know, it's like right. you have like ten kids in the same car. You know, to go to a yeah. show. You know, and and it was awesome. You know, back then it was like you know I don't know if you guys remember, but there there used to be this place uh, called La tu Cantina La Tuya. Mm -mm. Uh, I heard about it. It was on uh, Litro, you know. Uh, I, I believe later it became Handlebars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, oh, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah, okay, right. so... Now it's uh, <laughs> Run and Eagle. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So, I, I haven't heard through there like in a while, actually. But, uh, yeah, back in the day, like, we used to fill that place. That's and true. I think it was... Capacity was maybe, like, not even, like, 100 people. And we had, like, the fire marshal come in, like, so many times because we would over... Over like, capacity. Yeah, we would over, like... And, you know, filled up that place, Damn the man. but that was the way to do yeah. it. You know, like flyers and yeah. and and you know, we would we would we got kicked out from the mall so many times because we would go around in the mall at Cielo Vista, and we would take our CD player back in the day and like tell the kids, it's like, oh look, this is my man, like listen to it. And they were like, oh, this is pretty cool, cool. It's like you have a flyer, blah blah, and then yeah, sure enough, they would be there at the show. I remember there was a time when. Hot Topic was having like little mini shows there. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they would get packed too, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun back then. You know, and, and it's still now too. I think, uh, you know, as you grow older, you kind of like start seeing as like, okay, now who's my audience now? You know, it's not going to be those high school kids anymore. Mm -hmm. So who's my audience now? And and of course, as a musician, you you have to like evolve and you have to grow up and like, you know, refine. I guess your 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 way of playing and your music taste, so you've got to approach like a different crowd now. You got to approach like the people that were, you know, going to your shows back then, and they're already grown up now. You know, you want to hit off the same people, you know. But but in reality, it's like you know the the music that that we're playing right now. It's it's also music that kids like. Right. 
Right. So it's it's a it's more difficult now to reach out to those kids because you don't want to be like a creep, like and approaching that, a kid, you know. See, and that's the that's where it gets really touchy, man. If you have a right, bunch of adults yeah. around a, a, a bunch of minors, that's there's a fun end right there. Exactly, you don't want to go into because, the mall again, you know. Because nowadays nobody's hesit hesitating to call people out, you know. Yeah, yeah, for any any reason, you know, yeah, if somebody which is, which sees good. Like, you know, it something weird, yeah. Well, yeah, I want to give you like two minutes. <laughs> Just to, off the top of your head, rattle off all the venues you played in El Paso. Oh my god. Um, La Tuya was like our, our spot when, when I used to play in my punk band. Uh, we used to play at uh, High Knees a lot too. Uh, we used to play at the Bombardiers. Um, a whole bunch of house shows. I, I don't even know like you know how many times we played house shows. Uh, uh, we used to play also Club 101. It was like one of our spots. Which like one? The, the original 101. Airway. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, the one in downtown actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah exactly. At the, the Plaza. Yeah, that was that was her spot too to play. I saw you play at the one downtown. You, you probably did, yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We used to play there a lot too. Uh, they, they were always super cool with us playing there. I think it was kind of like one of those things they saw us like the first time. It's like. Mm -hmm. Like come in again, you know. It's like whenever you guys want to play, let us know. Blah, blah, blah. You know, if there was a, a touring man, whatever, we would hit them on. It's like, yeah, you, you know, let's see if we can put you on on that bill too, you know. Awesome. Um, but yeah, definitely. Like there was, there was, I can't even remember some of these spots that we used to play at. But we got a chance to be in the cool scene back then, and now we're experiencing a totally different scene. But it's really cool too now, you know. It's it's just a different way. Yeah, what do you think is a cool scene now, Chris? What's the cool scene now? Oh man! Like we're talking about for clubs, or we're talking about for what are you talking about for music or something or what? I guess like just everything. Like I think punk is still there, man. I think heavy metal is. is, is and for, I even hate to say because I I play heavy metal. I just think it's a, a dying genre, and I think it's it's dying. Rock and heavy metal are dying because sad uh, man. because people have gotten too safe. Don't say this. Don't don't dress like this. Don't do this. Don't, you know, it's a cancel culture, and you know hip hop and, sh and stuff like that has just always said fuck you, and that's where uh, rock and metal used to be, but we're not there anymore. So I think I think I don't know, man. I mean I don't think it'll die all the way, but it takes good people to uh, to bring it back, man. So yeah. hard work, dedication. I don't know. That's true. Well, I think we can wrap it up now. I want to thank you and AJ for your time, Adrian. Thank, thank you. For thank you for coming having in us. and just having this cool uh, hangout session with us. Because that's really what it's all about for us, man. We just we just bring you guys in so you can hang out. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, and also, like, big props to Father Wolf. And good luck with what you guys are working on. Hope you guys get that tour going pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Any any shout outs? Should we give any local bands, man, before we, before we take off? Uh, local bands. Like, there's there's a lot of really cool bands. Intentions. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Awesome. Yes. Uh, uh, Chris is my neighbor, so oh, wow. we're always like talking about each other's bands. They're they're always cool. Um, Counterplay is one of the really cool bands that we that we dig a lot. You know, we started playing a lot of shows when Father Bowl started, so they're they're always been like super super cool with us. Um, my buddy Alan from As the City Sleeps, he's uh, he's a cool guy. He has a cool project going on. Um, uh, metal bands like we're we're gonna play with uh, Seventh Eve on June. And with me and Tifa, they're awesome. Those dudes like yeah. get the crowd going, man. They're they're super super cool, and just everybody locally. I think everybody has their own little thing going on, and you know just keep keep at it. You know, just oh, keep yeah. going. Yeah, well, like I said, thanks thanks again, yeah, uh, thanks, Chris. Dude, yeah. thank you always like for your awesome hospitality. Oh, good time, man. Cool house, yes, and you know, by the way, man, it's <laughs> freaking cool, man. Yeah. People get a little freaked out when they come over here sometimes. <laughs> no, it's cool. I, I like this room right here, man. Yeah, so we just want to ask you guys to tune in, uh, share, like, support Follow Up, man. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time on the Monolith Sessions. Bye. Peace.